Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. I received a commission to do a video, a $30 commission, on force, mass, and energy. Um, and they're basically the historical development of these. I received the donation some uh, weeks ago at least, I think probably two months by now ago. Um, and I didn't realize how much I'd have to read through to get it. In fact, the, the salient quote that I was looking for, I haven't been able to find. It's um, by Newton, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, we're going to start with uh, The Origins of Modern Science by Herbert Butterfield, which I achieved for, which I uh, obtained for a dollar at Strand Bookstore, 1957. Strand Bookstore in uh, Manhattan. Okay, so the, the um, ideas were, the concepts we're talking about here. Force, uh, mass, and energy. I think maybe uh, we should start by defining these um, in a modern, in modern terminology. We can then discuss how that modern terminology came about. There are two ways we could go about this. I could either do it historically and lead up and end with the modern definition as kind of a surprise, or I can start with the modern definition so that we're clear as we go forward on how confused the ancients were. And that's the way, I'm gonna, that's the way I choose to do it. So forward fast for a while if you don't want to know the answer till later. Force is, I take, I'm defining these terms in, in um, scientific physics terms. And these are very bare bones definitions. Force is energy input or release i.e. a cause. A force can be done by willpower of a human or an animal or something, or it could be like a star exploding. Force is simply energy in a system, a cause of something. Energy is the, the ability to do work. So force is work happening. Or not necessarily work, but motion, energy, change of some physical nature. That's what force is. Mass uh, is an interesting concept. I remember in my high school physics class, it took me a little while, a day or two after they gave the definition, and I actually stayed after class and talked to the teacher about it. I said, I don't get what you're driving at with this concept of mass. It's distinguished from weight. And I don't remember how it was put in the book, but it wasn't clear. And finally, the teacher said to me, uh, think of this a spaceship floating in outer space. And if you try to push it, it's, it has a resistance, even though it weighs nothing in outer space. So, mass means weight, but doesn't necessarily mean that it weighs anything. It's not any place where you can put it on scales and weigh it. But mass is uh, matter clumped together. And well, I mean, you can have a, a Quark is a mass of, of, it's a mass. Now, if you want to get really strict, mass, or matter, uh, is cold energy, or energy that's been slowed down. And uh, for the, the quickest, I'll just give a quick proof and be off. E equals mc squared, okay? Uh, energy is equal to mass times constant squared. Okay. Energy, what is that? It is uh, embodied motion. So I want to stop on that for just a second. If force is energy that's happening, doing something, and, and energy itself is different, then we have to say that force, which we were defining earlier, is a cause. Force is some event, something happening. Uh, but energy itself is just the potential for motion or for force. Energy, I want to say right now, is always embodied. You never, ever, ever find energy being carried away from a chemical reaction, for example, or uh, the splitting of an atom or something. You never find energy disappearing out of the equation in the event without a particle to carry it. They, physicists have taken this for granted for a long time, and nowadays they probably don't take it for granted anymore, but they've discovered a lot of interesting things by taking that absolutely for granted. Every single time they had any iota of energy that they couldn't account for, they hypothesized a particle to be carrying the energy. 
and upon further investigation they have always, always found it, including gravitons. You may know about the LILO Observatory, I think that's what it is, L-I-L-O, um, where they, it's a telescope that's two miles long laid down in the ground and it detects gravity waves. Brilliant, because gravity being a force has to be carried by a particle, namely gravitons. Um, they never, never, never find a force without some particle taking care of carrying the force. So energy is an embodied motion or embodied uh, movement, uh, embodied, even, even heat breaks down to atoms moving. Everything that you want to call energy basically comes down to motion. And that's why absolute zero can't be obtained unless you do away with energy, but then there's nothing there to, to be at absolute zero. Okay, that's all fun and interesting. Now let's get on to the next bit. Now I regret that I, I didn't have, uh, I had Isaac Asimov's uh, Words in Science or something, big dictionary, in Utah. Lots of other books that would have been applicable in Utah, but we've made do with that. Now, on to the origins of modern science. We're going to go to page 15. We're going to talk first about uh, the question of motion in the ancient world, because uh, that had force, mass, and energy all tied up and confused. Clear back from Aristotle. And Aristotle's idea and views uh, of, of what was going on with motion held sway through the medieval period right up into the Renaissance and uh, had to be battled against by Galileo. Now according to Aristotle's theory, um, you know that there was uh, the, the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, and each element sought its proper place in the universe. And that was just, it, you didn't explain how or why, it was just taken for granted. Everything obviously wants to be in its proper place. So fire, things made of fire, will want to go up towards the heavens. Earth, things made of earth, rock, dirt, will want to go down, uh, and so on. And I don't, I don't uh, it, you, you say, okay, so that water should have wanted to go, is, is, is water to be below land or above land, or is that earth, air, fire, and water? Uh, well, it, it didn't make perfect sense but it made better sense than anything they had. Uh, so, he says, everything wants to seek its place in uh, the cosmic order. Now, a thing moving towards the place where it naturally belongs, supposed to be, is called natural motion. Any other kind of motion is called violent motion. Okay? So, uh, moving a thing away from its natural place is violent motion it moving to where it should be is natural motion. Now notice that this doctrine is a doctrine of uh, rest, things being at rest. You have to explain things being in motion, but you don't have to explain them coming to a stop or being at a stop. There's nothing really to be said for something that's not moving. You just say, there it is. But you have to talk about what motion is. Okay. So we've got two confusions I want to point out already in Aristotle's thought. First of all, if you're going to talk about a mass having energy put into it or having force exerted on it, then you're going to be talking not only about things moving naturally, but also things moving violently, and there won't be any difference between these two. Okay, so it's already been bifurcated. The subject's already just been split in half needlessly. They've already taken one set of, of real-world events, just one set of things that exist and have energy input and movement, and they've split them in half, and they said some of these things that exist and have energy input are natural. Some of them are violent, right? And then you're going to go through and you're going to try to find all the, the characteristics of the natural and the characteristics of the violent, but there's no difference in these characteristics. It's, a, it's artificial. So that's our, the first thing I want to point out. And the second thing is, uh, there's, there's the fact that an object holding still or an object moving, either one, has to have energy put into it to change its movement. Or it has to have energy taken out if the movement is to slow it down, for example. It has to be drained.